What's up guys, Jankits here from Team Leviathan. Welcome to the first guide, and hopefully a series of many, where each player in the team is going to talk about some of the more advanced mechanics of their best heroes. And given that we pick a lot of Pudge, and we play it in quite a peculiar way, I figured that it kind of makes sense for me to start the series with a Pudge guide. So, I'll start by saying that Pudge is a hero that is pretty hard to coherently explain to someone how to play, and that's because there's no formula that you can follow to hit people with hooks. That's just something that has to be natural for you, that comes with practice. So, I'm going to assume that you already play the hero well, and talk about some of the mechanics that differentiate a good pudge from an absolutely amazing pudge. So, let's begin. I think that pudge's best role is honestly on support, mostly because pudge can jungle extremely effectively on both Radiant and on Dire, but also because Pudge just doesn't care for farming lanes and creeps, he just wants to get early levels, which he can get really easily in the current patch. Also, if you go missing for ganks, you're not leaving an enemy hero to free farm and to call that you're missing and to keep track of you. But the most important thing about Pudge support is that from minute zero you're off the map. Every lane has to play defensively or else they're going to risk being hooked by a Pudge, even if he's nowhere near. Uh, this, in my opinion, is the most crucial effect of a jungle pudge. So the first strategy I'm going to show you is the pudge pull to middle lane on the radiant side. And with this build, you want to start with boots of speed, tango, and then a clarity. The boots of speed are necessary. You can't do it without these because you just cannot make the pull timings without them. The tangos not as necessary because you can get uh, a carry to quelling blade these trees that i'm about to show you the ta uh, the uh sorry the clarity is the only thing that you don't absolutely need i just tend to go for the clarity because i like to do a lot of full throughs before i start ganking but if, if you're a punch that likes to gank early at level two or three that's fine too i tend to get three or four uh, at this point, I don't typically skill either Rot or Hook, because if you get into a level 1 engagement with your team, you're going to want Rot, most likely, unless you can hook someone into something like a Lion Stun or another That's Disable to last quite some time. And you want to go for the bottom rune, or whichever rune is closest to you and your team wants to, right. to go for, and you convince them that you deserve it, because Pudge obviously is doing the jungling strat, because he needs levels. So at this point, we're going to head over to the Radiant Big Camp, and we're going to wait for it to spawn. Uh, we're going to be pulling the creeps into the middle lane with Hook, which means you need to skill Hook at this point. We wait here, see what type of creep spawns, and we're going to pull it back into the middle lane. At 59 seconds is when you pull it, and we'll try to hook the big creep into the creep wave and pull them to this to this camp. So let's see what we got here. So we have Troll Warlords. So the, these ones are actually pretty good because uh, you just this is something you just kind of got to get used to, depending on the creeps. And Troll Warlords in this position, these two guys are going to come running in first and then him. So that means these guys are going to go back before he does, so I'm going to have a clear shot at this Troll Warlord here when I throw the hook. So we wait for 59 seconds. Come on. Run into the creep wave. Run back to the tier 2 middle lane. Throw the hook and pull the creep wave. So that's 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 a good pull. This one's actually quite inconsistent. Depending on how the creeps spawn, it can be very difficult to uh, pull the creeps correctly. Maybe you'll get a few of them, and if it's something like troll warlords, uh, they take out the creep wave very very quickly. So you might not even get to do the pull through. But here's the pull through here as you just pull this camp. And as you can see, this is kind of wiping out my creep wave. Gets me level 2, so if you're level 2 Pudge Ganker, you can go gank right now. Um, or you can just uh, clarity up and do another hook at the 59 second mark. So the second strategy that I'm going to show you is the Pudge pull to the Radiant bottom lane. And with this build, you want to go Boots of Speed, Tango, and Clarity if you're the 4 roll Pudge. However, for this, for this strategy, you can actually buy the Courier people tangos all sorts of things you don't need the boots for this strategy or the tangos you just need the clarity so if you want to play a five roll pudge and do this strategy that's okay too
So we want to stand in this little perch here, level up your hook, and we wait to see what spawns. So we're going to be hooking this way, standing here. So we want to make sure that there's no creep standing in the way of the big creep. And see, there's a little guy standing in the way, so this is why we use the clarity. You just hook him up here, and he's going to run into the tower and die. And he's going to maybe keep hitting you. No, he's fine. Okay. So you pop your clarity, and then at the 57 second mark, you want to hook the big creep. Exact same way, except the big creep's not going to die to the tower. So we go up here, we see the big creeps in the perfect position. Throw the hook. So like I said, you can do this without the clarity, but I mean, that's really risking it, because if you get a bad spawn and you don't have the clarity, there's no way you're going to make the 57 second mark. You're just going to be sitting there waiting for Pudge's slow-ass mana regen to regen you some mana. So when you're running through here, you want to stay in front of the creep, and that's only because the creeps can lose vision of the satyr. And in that case, you're going to have the creeps running back to the lane, and you can't jungle. So keep vision of it. Make sure to stay in front of it. Sometimes you lose the range creep. That's not a big deal. It doesn't really affect your uh, jungling speed, because a lot of your damage comes from broad and right clicks. So we got really nice spawns here. I can last it some ease. So unfortunately, I can't get the last hit on that one, and that's because the creeps run in a very odd kind of direction here they're gonna take a uh -huh. like a triangle kind of motion like that yeah like you see there yeah and we lost one too I... so this is just make sure that you kill all the creeps in this in this uh in this pull through i'm not gonna get I any lie. of those kills you run to the bottom room at two minutes and that's almost a full wave of creeps denied that's really nice and i'm almost Three. level three at two minutes so pudge is pretty happy at this point and if you're a level 2 ganking Pudge, you can go gank. Yeah. Otherwise, you can just do another pull through. So the third strategy that I'm going to show you is the Pudge pull to middle lane on the Dire side. And I'm torn between whether this one's better or the Radiant pull to the bottom lane is better. Only because this one has the uh, upside of your detrimenting their enemy middle laner by removing one lane of creeps every so often. And uh, that also means that the lane is going to be pushed for them. So it's very dangerous for the enemy middle laner and you can do lots of good ganks with this strategy. So I go for the Boots of Speed, the Tango, and then the Clarity, and you actually want to be pooled one ward. The reason for that is, with this strategy, you can have uh, the middle lane of creeps lose vision of the jungle creeps as they're running up this hill. And that can be very annoying for Pudge. Nine out of ten times it won't happen, because the creeps are fairly slow, and there's different like leashing patterns that can happen depending on, uh, depending on what creeps you get. But I just like to place a ward here just in case, because it can happen, especially with the Troll Warlords. That's the type of creep that very annoying things can happen with that, especially when they start summoning skeletons and glitching out. So with this with this strategy, once again, we go to the top room and we can test it. Let's kill either Rod or Hook, because you never know what you're going to need. So we're just going to wait here and see what spawns here. Where we're going to be hooking is we're going to be go running, run down here and then hook the creep into the into the creep wave and into the tower and they're going to run up through here and pull to the jungle. So let's see what we get. And we got Ursas. So either one of these, you can hook either, it doesn't matter. I uh, just hook it at pretty much any point and it's like a, it's good timing. If you, if you watch the creep spawn here and then you just run down and hook pretty much any timing. It's specifically for the for the uh, melee creeps. The Troll Warlords can be a little difficult because you have to time the uh, auto attack so that it hits you while you're in the creep wave, but that's just a kind of general pulling strategy there. That's something that you always have to do with range creeps. So the most important thing about this strategy is that we have all our creeps die so that we don't send a double wave out to middle lane.
thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hopefully I'll get some more Pudge tips to you and some of these other guys on Leviathan. I'll get their videos out with their best heroes.